in the business world and in social media in general, there is a big challenge among us. And the big challenge actually is Twitter. And it's not just among people who are trying to use Twitter. It's actually Twitter itself. They're having a challenge with themselves. The reason being is that people just don't understand a number of different things. They don't understand how to use Twitter. They don't understand why to use Twitter. And it, it's, it's very confusing to people. I know this because I've spent a lot of time traveling around, talking to people, networking, and networking, and the numbers show it too. I mean, it's not just from my personal experience. Uh, I mean, when you look at the numbers, Twitter itself has 974 million registered users as of, uh, as of I think, November 2014. It's close to a billion, huge numbers. Now, those are just registered users. The registered monthly active users are 284 million, okay? 284, if we do the math, 284 divided by 974 million, we're talking about less than 30%. 29% of the people who have actually registered are using Twitter on, a, on an actively basis, on a monthly active basis. That's, that's a staggering number. And, and Twitter has announced that they're going to be shifting the way they're onboarding people. They're going to make it easier. They're going to make them a little bit more interactive. They're going to show people how to grow their following. And, and rightfully so, because that's why people, they get so discouraged when they sign up for it. And I have a theory why. Um, theory behind that is we have LinkedIn, we have Facebook. Um, those are the two kind of main ones for the older generation. Facebook you use more from a personal aspect. Obviously, a lot of businesses use it. It has the most um, users on there, over a billion, probably close to a, creeping up to a billion and a half of uh, users on Facebook. And a lot of people use it for, like I said, for personal uses. They You, you interact with your friends, your family, you update pictures, you make statuses, you can comment. There's really no... Uh, real restriction around the length, although there are some restrictions, but you can write a pretty lengthy update on Facebook and not have to worry about reducing it down to a short amount of characters. Uh, it's it's very intuitive. Same thing with LinkedIn. It's the business biz, business to business networking site for the, the social media world. You get to connect with other people. You get to uh, you get to post updates, you get to put your resume on there, you can find new opportunities, both from uh, leads and sales to also growing and finding new jobs. And um, there's a ton of things, there's forums, there's groups on there that uh, there actually are the forums, they act as a forum, the groups, there's business pages, you can upload videos and pictures. And so these sites have developed, actually, as you've seen them over time to be very, um, to be very similar in some circumstances. But Twitter has been kind of left out in the dark. It's growing as far as registered users, but the monthly active users are still the, the way behind everything else. Why you want to use Twitter is another story. Why you want to use it is, is that unlike Facebook and LinkedIn, Twitter, you do not have a gatekeeper. Uh, some people do have the options of protecting their tweets, but that doesn't actually happen very often. Um, what happens here is that uh, Twitter is a very one-on-one -on -one interactive tool. You can talk to anybody. You want to talk to a celebrity, you can shoot them a tweet. They will receive it. Whether they respond to it is another story. But if you've seen a lot of them, they do respond because they have a chance now to, they have a tool not just the chance, but they have a tool that allows them to interact with the fans like no other. And it builds up people's credibilities. It builds up people's brands. People like Kevin Hart um, might have never had the, the opportunities that he had if it wasn't for his fans and what he's done on his social media. It's not just Twitter, but it's also like Instagram. But he interacts with his fan base and he can talk with them. And he's, he's grown his numbers and his, his influence by taking advantage of those opportunities on social media, on Twitter. And he can go now to these, these heads, these executives and say, you know what? I have the fan base to do this. I, I am a brand. I will make this movie more than what it was if it wasn't for my brand. And so he has the opportunity to do that. And even people beyond that. 
um, I've had a, a friend of mine that I worked with back in 2012, the later part of 2012, that actually got uh, grew his business substantially by six figures and only found two new clients through this, but he, he found an opportunity through using Twitter. And if it wasn't for Twitter, never would have had it. I've talked to people who ha run chats on Twitter and they make a living and a pretty good living by actually selling sponsorships to their chats. There are people that I know, the business owners, um, that, that actually credit Twitter specifically for 90% of their sales. And this is even in the US, this is beyond, this is global. So Twitter itself is a phenomenal tool. I have some numbers for you too. Let, let me, so those are stories, let me tell you some actual numbers here. So from a study conducted, um, it, it shows that 80% of Twitter users are more likely to recommend brands they follow. That's a big thing. We talk about in the olden days, you didn't have tools like this that could spread a word of mouth. You just had people talking. Now you have this electronic tool that just wants to say something, not just one person will see it. You're talking about an average person on Twitter has about 205 followers. So you're saying one person says something, 205 people say it. So it's a, it's a big number there. Um, 60, 67% of Twitter users are more likely to buy from brands they follow. And you have to think about this too. We're not just talking about big brands. We're not talking about Canon or Apple or Coca-Cola or Kraft. We're talking about brands like a, a, a small business brand. We're talking about a personal brand. If you're selling something and you have a product for people to purchase, you are a brand. And so, uh, so again, that number 67% of Twitter users are more likely to buy from a brand they follow. So if they're following you and you're selling something and they know this and they're aware of that, they, there's a 67% chance more, like, more likely that they will purchase from you. More than 78%, 73% of followers want updates on future products. Again, you have something, people want to know about it. If they're following you, they want to know about it. They understand what you're doing as long as you've put it out there, which I'm sure you have. And again, if you haven't done this yet, this is these are numbers to open your eyes and say, you know what, it's time for me to go onto Twitter and start to use it and to use it effectively because it's there. The opportunities are there, the population is growing. Um, the more and more we can educate each other on it, it's just gonna help each other. So uh, let me continue one more stat here. About 60%, 61% of followers want to offer ideas and feedback to brands. That's another huge number. They want to interact. They want to tell people what they're thinking about that. And so Twitter allows all these different, you can sell, but you can get feedback, you can get word of mouth. You, if you're not on Twitter yet, you need to get on there. You need to take advantage of it. I've developed a, a book, Chirp Chirp, that is a, a, a guide, it's a step-by-step -step guide to doing exactly this. Anyone from a, a beginner to an advanced user can pick something out of this. And we talk about everything from starting out from the basics, understanding the terminology, to doing Twitter ads, to using tools that help you be more effective and be more productive by using Twitter. We also talk about how to measure your results so you can actually see the ROI you're getting from your activities on Twitter, what's what's working, what's not working, so you can be more scientific with what you're doing. Um, but it's not just science, there's the, there's an art to it too, and we talk about that in the book. We also have an event coming up uh, in, in conjunction with the actual book, and this is gonna bring everyone together. So we have people from the tools, um, the people involved in the tools that are helping you be more effective. Also, also the people who are involved in the book, who've contributed, who have these real life stories that I mentioned. The people, the small people, not these, not these celebrities, not these people who have 100 million followers or a million followers, or even a couple hundred thousand. We're talking about people who have a couple thousand, a couple hundred, and, and they are getting real results that are helping their business and their brand grow by using Twitter. And we have them jumping on to talk to everybody globally. So check it out. Check out the book. Check out the event. Check out some more of the videos. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm really looking forward to all this. I hope these stats help you and understand the power that Twitter has and that you need to take that first step to jumping on there and understanding how to use it and using it the right way 